BTR Learning Channel. My name is Emily Ekoasam, your trade service instructor. Our topic is menu planning. Have you ever planned a menu before? Yes, you have. You have been planning on what to eat to meet your nutritional needs. By the end of the lesson, you will be able to one, explain what menu is. Two, outline three functions of a menu. Three, outline and explain four main types of a menu. And then four, state and explain five factors to consider when planning a menu. What then is menu planning? A menu literally means a bill of fare. This is a list of prepared dishes put together for a meal. That is, selecting your individual dishes to make up a meal is what is termed as a menu. Let's now look at examples of a menu. We'll begin with a two-course menu. Two-course menu comprises of the main meal and a starter. Specific example is chivon lye soup with fufu as the main meal and sliced pineapple as it desserts. Three course menu comprises of three courses. That is a starter or an appetizer, the main meal, and a dessert. Let's take an example of the three course meal. The starter can be tomato and cucumber salad going with bread rolls at the starter, followed by the main meal, that is chicken pane, tossed carrots, shito, and saffron rice as the main meal, and the dessert being queen of pudding. Let's now look at functions of a menu. One. It informs the caterer on the dishes to be prepared. This means it serves as an information to the catering staff on the specific dishes to be prepared in a day or at a specific time. Two, it also informs the customer about the dishes available. This means it gives information about the specific dishes available to a restaurant at a specific period of time to the customer. Three, it informs the catering staff and the customer about the cost of the menu. This means it will help the catering staff or the food and beverage establishment to know the cost of food consumed by a customer and also give a clear picture to the customer about the amount of services that has been rendered to him or her and how much he or she is supposed to pay at the end of the service. We will now look at four main types of a menu. One, we have a la carte menu. Two, table dot menu. Three, Speciality menu, and then four, cyclical menu. Let's look at what an a la carte menu is. This is a menu with all the dishes individually priced, and the dishes are cooked to order. This means that each and every single dishes on the menu is priced separately. For example, if it is a breakfast menu for a restaurant or for a food and beverage establishment and there is cereals, cereal dishes, all of them will be individually priced together with all the other dishes. For example, pineapple juice, it will have its quotation as 15 CDs. Gava drink, going for 14 cities. Miss fruit juice, going for 18 cities. If 
it also have omelette to be said. For example, Spanish omelette can go for 15 CDs, whilst plain omelette goes for 8 CDs. If it also have cereals or porridge, oatmeal can go for 12 CDs, wheat meal porridge going for 8 CDs, Tom Brown going for 8 CDs. So you have the flexibility of selecting from each of the dishes to make up your meal. Let us look at what Table Dot menu is. This is also known as a set price menu. A menu with all the dishes put together to form a menu. With this menu, there is no flexibility of selecting from the various dishes. It has already been selected and priced together. So the flexibility is not there as compared to the a la carte menu. Let's look at an example of a lunch table dot menu. The example will be based on three course meal. That is a starter, main meal, and then dessert. Example of a starter. Consumer Royale, going with Catherine Hill as the starter. And then the main meal being chicken pane, tossed French beans, shito, and saffron rice as the main meal. And then the dessert can be orange pancake. Let's look at speciality menu. This is a menu for special function and specific group of people who need special attention. The speciality menu goes for special functions as well as those with specific nutritional needs. So when planning for speciality menu, a lot of considerations should be done. Example of speciality menu for those with special nutritional needs. For example, a vegetarian or obese. For a vegetarian, we have street vegetarian and then a lacto vegetarian. When planning meal for a street vegetarian, always remember they don't eat the flesh of an animal and its product. So you have to omit any flesh of an animal and its product. So example of a menu for a street vegetarian can be also be two course meal or a three course meal. Let's look at example of two course meal for a street vegetarian. That one will comprise of the main meal and a dessert. So the main meal can be bean stew with fried plantain and the dessert being cut orange. Let's look at cyclical menu. This is a menu compiled to cover a given period of time, such as a week, month, or more. This is usually compiled for homes, prisons, boarding houses, universities, etc. This is compiled to cover a period of time because of the number of people being catered for at a time. Let's then look at five factors to be considered when planning a menu. One, the type of establishment. When planning a menu, the type of establishment is very important. That will enable you to know the kinds of people whom you'll be planning for. Is it a restaurant, prison, boarding house? You have to factor this to know your target group. Two, type of customers itself. We all know that every customer and how much he or she can afford and also their specific needs. So when planning a menu, 
customer is also very important to be considered so that you'll be able to satisfy them accordingly. Three, the nutritional needs. The nutritional needs must also be considered when planning a menu because each group of people needs specific nutritional needs. For example, a baby is now growing, so will need more bodybuilding foods. Adolescent is very active, so they will also need more energy-giving food. The aged will also need more protecting food. So when planning a menu, these things must be considered to meet individual nutritional needs. Four, food in season. You all agree with me that food in season is always available and cheap. So when planning a menu, you have to factor the food in season so that you will get it at a low price and then it will be easy for you to purchase as well. Five, repetition. You have to always avoid repetition of color, texture, and ingredients to balance the meal, to make it more appetizing for the customer to enjoy. Based on these five factors, let's plan a lunch meal for a restaurant. We'll plan a three-course meal for a restaurant. You can have chivon lye soup and bread rolls as a starter. And then the main meal can be grilled tilapia, tomato con cassé, shito, and because Mango is in season. You can prepare your mango food and add. This brings us to the end of menu planning. I hope you have enjoyed the lesson. Let's do a quick recap. We learned about what menu planning is. We learned about the functions of a menu. We also learned about the four types of a menu. We also learned about the factors to be considered when planning a menu.